So this begins uh, five straight weeks of John chapter 6, uh, what we know as the bread of life discourse, but it begins here with this uh, miracle of the uh, loaves and the fish. Um, <clears throat> what I just wanted to key in on is the very last verse. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. Who here watches the TV series Alone? Anybody watch Alone? Two people in this entire congregation. This is one of the best shows on TV. Take 10 people and they put them out in the wilderness and they have to survive. And they self-document. It's like a videography, you know, they have to bring this camera out there, cameras, and anyway, record their experience. Uh, so it's, it's very authentic and all sorts of remote areas, Arctic and Canada and all of Mongolia and Patagonia. Uh, but uh, whoever lasts the longest gets 500,000 bucks. Um, I was thinking about applying just for fun. <laughs> just think we, we could renovate the brain room, we could do all kind of cool stuff, put a roof on. Uh, anyway, look, uh, our Lord goes off to be alone. Who's truly alone, though? Our Lord or uh, those who are attached to things of this world, I would argue, are more alone than our Lord is. Um, <clears throat> in the way they describe this TV series on their uh, website, describing the, the whole purpose of the show, these individuals must self-document this fierce test of will as they strive to survive in complete isolation. I would argue that um, our Lord is not isolating himself. Um, he's seeking solitude, which he often does in the Gospels uh, for the purpose of prayer, to be with his Heavenly Father. And we need to do that too. We all need solitude in our life for prayer, to be with God alone. It's an important part of a spiritual life. Communion and fellowship, yes. Full public worship here and the holy sacrifice of the Mass, yes. Uh, but also solitude. Go to your Heavenly Father in secret. Go to your room. Pray to your Heavenly Father in secret. Our Lord also calls us uh, to practice solitude. People are afraid, they feel like it's isolation. People wig out on that show, man, when they get out there in the wilderness, some of them uh, just kind of mentally come apart. Uh, <clears throat> Our Lord's not like that, you know, he, uh, he loves being alone and he knows he's not really truly alone in the strict sense. As a parish priest, I spent most of my life alone, you know, most of my priesthood, I've lived alone. This is a luxury to have somebody else in the rectory. Uh, yeah, I've usually lived by myself in other parishes and uh, done a lot of things by myself. Walked up the Appalachian Trail mostly by myself and run around Israel for a month by myself. I like to do things. Be I like to. I love solitude. I relish it uh, because when I'm alone is when I feel the presence of God the most. People probably think, you know, how does he stand it being in that rectory all alone? I never feel alone. When I walk into my room, it's like, ah, get my Wi-Fi signal nice and strong again. Get a full bars, you know, my con conscious contact with my creator. I can recharge my batteries in the presence of God. That's what our Lord continuously does in the Gospels and we all should do. To follow his example, he sought quiet places alone. Often a great while before dawn, he goes off to be with uh, his heavenly father. And he knows he's not alone. He says that a couple times in John's gospel. He says things like, you know, he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone. And he even tells the apostles, I know one day you're going to all run. You're going to be scattered. You're going to run off to your own homes. 
You will leave me alone, he says to his apostles. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. So profound spiritual life our Lord has is inner communion or fellowship with his Father. And we have to foster that, and being in solitude with our Creator fosters that awareness of the presence of God. So the world... So I so filled with irony or paradox here. Um, if we run from that solitude with the Lord, with our Creator, if we run from that and, and are attached to the things of this world, seek fellowship with the things of this world, fill our belly with the things of this world, if our portion is of the things of this world, even people, and all the things of this world will never be fully satisfied. That's the irony. If we lack this uh, first inner communion or fellowship with our Creator, if our life is not oriented properly, kind of like the Ten Commandments. The first three commandments have to do with our relationship with our Creator. We have to put that, get those nice and solid. Then we're oriented properly towards created things. If we reverse that to put God at the end, uh, he's an afterthought, uh, garnish on the plate, you know, kind of an appetizer, maybe whatever. Um, you know, we'll never really be satisfied if we cling to the things of this world. Um, ironically, that's when we feel the most dissatisfied. The Lord wants to give us all those things. He made them for crying out loud. He made everything down here, all these created goods. Uh, but if our desire is for him first, I have no good apart from you, Psalm 16. Um, what have I on earth uh, but you? I love this line from Psalm uh, 73. It's so beautiful. There's nothing upon earth that I desire besides thee. Then he will give us all these good things and satisfy the desire of every living thing when we put God first in our life. He wants to give us these things, but we want to grasp and cling. So that's really what's behind this effort to make him king. They want a bread king. They want somebody who's going to give them all the good things of this world. Uh, certain grasping and clinging. They want their kingdom, not God's kingdom. St. Thomas Aquinas reminds us, you know, when we pray to our Father, we say, thy kingdom come, not our kingdom come. The kingdom of the flesh is to cling to the things of uh, this world, to be given bread. That's what they're clamoring for. They're going to harpoon him, take him off, force him to be their king. I like the Greek word there is harpazo, literally like where we get the word harpoon. They go after him to forcibly make him king and to carry him off, harpoon him. Um, <clears throat> but he's not going to do it. He's not going to just be a bread king and give them the things of this world. He's got something better uh, for them. It's the same temptation the devil lays on him in the temptation narrative of the Synoptic Gospels. And it challenges him. Hey, make these stones, turn them into bread. Be a bread king. It's kind of implied there, at least in Matthew's gospel, it's literally stones. Like all these stones all around you. Turn them, turn all this. You could do that. Turn it all into bread. And, and just give the people what they want. Uh, created things. And our Lord answers back. Nope, um, you shall worship the Lord your God. Him alone shall you serve. God alone. If we worship God alone, we'll never be alone. That's the ironic twist, the paradox of these readings. You run to the creature, you'll always be dissatisfied like Solomon, who had everything for crying out loud. What does he say at the end of his life, running after all these things? 
vanity of vanities and a striving after the wind. So we can't serve God and mammon. This is the, the battle within every human heart. Uh, the world, the flesh, and the devil trying to turn us away from our creator towards created things. You cannot serve God and mammon. You can't worship God and mammon. No Nisite Domine is a great expression of St. Thomas Aquinas. He was praying in his chapel and before crucifix, and our Lord spoke to him. He said, uh, like a genie in a bottle, you know? Our Lord was like, Thomas, you've spoken well of me. What would you like? I'll give you anything you want. And Thomas, without hesitating, uh, just said, no Nisi Te Domine. Uh, nothing but you, O oh Lord. Nothing but you, O oh Lord. St. Teresa of Avila, famous for that expression. God alone uh, suffices. Um, <clears throat> so if you spend time with God, I would submit to you also, not only will he satisfy the desire, your desires, and give you created things, uh, and more enjoyment and relish of them when God is first in our lives. Um, he will also bring us to greater communion with others. We, we will have a greater capacity for fellowship with others. We will be able to love others properly and be more accessible and available to them. As our Lord was, where did he find strength to perform so many charitable works and be so accessible to others? From his time he spent with his heavenly father in solitude. Um, so interestingly, our Lord says later in John's gospel, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. The source of our strength. When we die, we bear fruit. Such an ironic twist. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. That death really is a death to the things of this world, dying to ourselves, at least dying to our flesh. If it dies, it bears much fruit, he says. And when I'm lifted up from the earth, okay, when the world is crucified to me, like St. Paul later says, and I to the world, when he lets go, total detachment on the cross, completely let go of everything, um, then he will draw all men to himself, he says. I will draw all men to myself because he's free to love now in a much free, freer way when uh, all attachment to the things of this world is broken. That's what he's calling us to. So paradox, death bears fruit, okay. detachment leads to satisfaction of the desires of our heart. Real truth satisfying the desires of every living thing precisely when we let go uh, and look at God, fix ourselves on God. Detachment leads to a far greater. Detachment leads to a far greater attachment. Solitude with God leads to greater communion with ourselves. Really? Come back to ourselves. We're refreshed in our true identity our mission and purpose and the meaning of our being in existence when we get by ourselves with God. We're refreshed in our own identity um, in solitude with God. Uh, we have, we'll have a far greater availability to others, capacity to, uh, to love others when we spend time in solitude with our Creator. And of course, um, We'll have this tremendous communion, fellowship with God uh, in our hearts. Solitude with God. If we do that, uh, 
like our Lord, will never be alone.